Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, antisense oligonucleotides. Okay, so uh, we've discussed the methylphosphonate antisense oligonucleotides, which are these molecules based on a single-stranded molecule of DNA, except that you have changed these phosphate groups which link the uh, neighbouring um, deoxyribose uh, sugars you've changed them from being this normal phosphodiester link to instead of having this oxygen coming off each of the phosphorus atoms, which is negatively charged, you change that to a methyl group. Now, uh, we saw that that stopped the molecule from being degraded by uh, enzymes within the cytoplasm of the cell, so it made it more stable. However, it made it more difficult to deliver because the molecule was yielded less soluble. And also, it uh, didn't activate the RNA's H enzyme to break down the mRNA once it has bound to that mRNA. Okay, so it wasn't that effective at stopping uh, the uh, expression of the gene. So, the next form of oligonucleotide we're going to turn our attention to is what's known as the phosphorophyoate of the antisense oligonucleotides. So, the phosphoro Phyoates, uh, okay. So phosphorophyoates, okay. Phosphorophyoates, okay. Right. So what is the structure of a phosphorophyoate antisense oligonucleotide? So again, it's going to be completely based on the structure of a single-stranded molecule of DNA. So again. All you're going to change, however, is this linker between uh, deoxyribose sugars. So you're not going to change the organic bases. You're not going to change the, um, the um, deoxyribose sugars. You're going to target the phosphate group that links uh, neighboring deoxyribose sugars. Okay, so let's say this is the free prime, uh, well, the third carbon of the uh, deoxyribose sugar up here. And then it will have an oxygen here a phosphorus atom double bonded to an oxygen and now again we're going to target this uh, group here now we're going to make a smaller change here we're going to replace it from an oxygen to a sulfur atom now sulfur atoms are in the same group of the periodic table as oxygen so they have very similar chemical properties to oxygen okay so it's going to have a single bond with the phosphorus atom just like oxygen would and then it's acquired another electron from an ionic source just like oxygen would have and um, it therefore has a negative charge and then everything else is exactly the same again so you can see that this is probably far more like a authentic single-stranded DNA molecule than was the methyl, methyl phosphonate uh, antisense oligonucleotides. Okay, and indeed it is. So, the first thing to say is that these phosphorophyoate antisense oligonucleotides are stable in cells. They do not get broken down in the way that single stranded DNA does get broken down. Okay, in addition, they are soluble. They maintain their solubility because they still have the negative charge. And finally, they are still recognized as being similar enough to DNA. So the, when they bind to uh, the RNA, okay, that is recognized as an RNA-DNA hybrid. And the RNA's H enzyme will then break down uh, the mRNA. So these phosphorophyoates are extremely, I repeat, extremely effective at cutting off at the expression of the gene because they activate these RNA's H enzymes which are going to break down the mRNA strand which they have bound to. Okay, so these two that we've seen so far, the methyl phosphonates, okay, and also the phosphorophyoates, uh, which were both phosphonates, okay, uh, which were both uh, modifications of the uh, single-stranded DNA where you looked at modifying the group that was attached to the phosphorus atom here. These are what are known as primary or first generation. Okay, I think I'll put that uh, first generation uh, oligonucleotide. So first 
generation antisense oligonucleotides. Okay, since what we have turned our attention to is second generation antisense oligonucleotides, okay, and in the second generation antisense oligonucleotides, you don't target um, this group anymore. Instead, you make a different modification. So you're going to make a modification to uh, the deoxyribose sugar now. Okay, so let me remind you of the structure of the single-stranded uh, DNA molecule. So this thing that we had here, SSDNA, single-stranded DNA. Okay, so we had the phosphate group here, the fifth carbon of the deoxyribose sugar here, and then it was attached from the first carbon to an organic base of some description. So either adenine, cytosine, guanine, or, or thymine. Okay, and then we'd have another uh, nucleotide below this. Okay, so here's the deoxyribose sugar again. Okay, and then maybe another organic base off here. And then you'd continue this process on maybe for 13 to 25 uh, nucleotides. Now, Previously, our target has been modifying the phosphate groups that are in between the deoxyribose sugars. Now what we're going to do is modify each of the deoxyribose sugars. So you're going to target this second carbon here. And one of the things that you can do is add on um, a ethyl group, which has a methoxy group coming off it. Okay, so one of the second generation uh, antisense oligonucleotides that you can produce has coming off of these deoxyribose sugars on the second carbon it has an oxygen which then has an ethyl group coming off it okay and then also off this ethyl group you then have a methoxy group so an oxygen which is then linked to a methyl group okay so you have this on every single one of these uh, deoxyribose sugars, so you'll have it down here as well. So here's an oxygen with this ethyl group coming off here, and then off the ethyl group you then have the methoxy group here. Okay, and this sort of an antisense oligonucleotide which you can produce is what's known as a 2 prime O 2 methoxy ethyl oligonucleotide. So this is called a 2 prime O, and then you put 2-methoxy ethyl, like this. So, what does this refer to? Because this all looks rather complicated. Okay, well, this, whoops, ethyl. This 2' prime here refers to the fact that we are putting it off the second carbon of the deoxy uh, ribose sugars. Okay, then we have put an oxygen there, so it's coming all off this oxygen here. Okay, and then you've got an ethyl group coming off there, so ignore the brackets at the moment, you've got an ethyl group coming off there, and then off the ethyl group, second carbon, you've then got this methoxy group here, so that's what that 2-methoxy there means. So, 2 prime O, 2-methoxy ethyl oligonucleotides. Now, these are actually far more similar to single-stranded RNA than single-stranded DNA, because this oxygen here it's as though you've got an alcohol group coming off the second carbon, basically. So it's far more like single-stranded RNA than single-stranded DNA. Now that should ring alarm bells for you, because what happened? The oligonucleotide bound, will bind to uh, the uh, mRNA within the cell to which it's complementary, or at least in part, it's complementary to a part of it. And then what was supposed to happen was that the RNA's H enzyme recognized that as a DNA-RNA hybrid and then broke down the mRNA, which was bound to our DNA oligonucleotide, okay? But this is actually similar to RNA, so it's not going to recognize this as a DNA-RNA hybrid. It will think it's a double-stranded piece of RNA, if anything. So RNA's H certainly does not recognize uh, these oligonucleotides bound to, the, bound to the mRNA, and therefore the mRNA is not going to uh, be destroyed by RNA's H. So um, 
the expression of the gene is not destroyed by RNA's H mechanisms, and instead uh, you rely on uh, RNA's H independent mechanisms. However, these are actually extremely effective at um, blocking the expression of genes uh, through these uh, non-RNA's H mechanisms. Now, why would you want to use these when you can use the phosphorophioates? Well, the problem with the phosphorophioates is that they bind to a whole bunch of other things other than just the uh, mRNA uh, that you, they're targeted against. So phosphorophioates have this tendency, because of the sulfur atom, to end up binding to all sorts of proteins, and they cause all sorts of other side effects. So we are very, very hopeful that in the future these antisense oligonucleotides are going to be used clinically. And in fact, some of them already are used clinically for stopping the expression of certain uh, proteins which are causing pathology. Okay, uh, but we're hopeful that we could use them for a huge number of different things. So, for instance, think of all the diseases which are caused by certain expressions of expressions of protein, basically, we could use this, um, these antisense oligonucleotides to potentially stop the expression of disease-causing proteins, is the idea. However, if you've got phosphorophioates, which are just binding to all sorts of proteins, then you can see that there's going to be problems with that. It's going to cause all sorts of side effects, okay? Whereas these um, 2 prime O 2 methoxy e phal oligonucleotides, they are better because uh, they bind to the mRNA and they do reduce the gene expression considerably, uh, but they don't bind to proteins in the same sort of haphazard way as the uh, phosphorophioates do. Okay, so that concludes our discussion of the antisense oligonucleotides.